In this tutorial, we're going to take a file that we created using the basic drawing features of your software, taking those vectors and creating 3D components. And then we'll take that composite model and show you how to create tooling so that in the end, you can be expected to cut a finished part just like you see on screen. To start off this tutorial, we're going to open up an existing file. So we're going to go over to our startup tasks and choose open existing file. We can navigate over to our tutorials folder to our teddy bear head folder and find the file called teddy bear vector drawing.crv 3D. We're going to highlight that by left clicking it and then choose to open it. Now to make things easy, we've already pre-created the vectors that we're going to need to create our bear head. These were created exclusively using two of our create vector tools. One is draw circles and the other one is draw an ellipse. The ears were drawn using our draw circles. Our eyes were as well. Our nose and our snout were the ellipse tool. And also our mouth was as well, but we slightly edited that to make it look a little more realistic. Now it's always a bit easier to create 3D components if you can see both your 2D and your 3D view at the same time. So let's just go ahead and tile that vertically. So now on our left hand side, we've got our 2D vectors and on our right hand side, we have our 3D view. Currently right now, there are no models in there. All we can see is just our modeling plane. Now in order to start creating some shapes, some 3D shapes from our 2D vectors, we'll need to go ahead and use some of the tools found on our modeling tab. So let's just go ahead and click that. At the top of our modeling tab, we have all of our modeling tools our transform objects tools, and other tools that we can use to help edit our 3D components. At the bottom, we have our component tree. Now our component tree will display all of our levels and the components that we have on those levels, also how the components interact with each other on those levels, and how the levels interact with each other. Currently right now, by default, we have one level. It's set to an add level, and it's named level one. Now, as we create our bear, we're going to create multiple levels and we're going to name them appropriately to make sure that we have all of our 3D components organized. Now, the result of what's happening over here by us choosing to place different components on different levels and how we've changed their combined modes, the result of that will be displayed in our 3D view and we call that result our composite model. So the way we're going to build up our bear is we're going to start from the back, creating a face, and then we're going to add details to that face, and then we're going to add in our ears in the end. So our first level, we're going to rename that to something a little bit more appropriate. So we're going to select it and right click on that and go down to rename, and we're going to rename that base, and then press enter. Now we're going to be using our Create Shape from Vector Outlines tool exclusively throughout this demo. So we may as well take a second and go over all of the options that it has. So let's click that. Now this opens up our Create Shape form. So we have three different options of shapes that we can create with selected vectors. We can create a curved profile, a angular profile, or a flat profile. We can choose the angle that we want it to be specifically by typing in a number, or we can use the slider to change it dynamically. We can give it a base height. We can use the slider to do that dynamically if you would like. We can choose how we want the shape to be ended off or finished off by giving it a final height, no limit. We can limit the height. We can give it a scale to exact height. We can also add in tilt if we would like to, and we can change the combine mode to be add, subtract, merge, or merge lowest. And we can rename our components as we go. So to start off, let's select the circle for our face. We're going to use a curved profile. We're going to set this to the angle to be 30 degrees. No base height. We're not going to limit our height. We're not going to add any tilt. This is going to be an add component. We want to add this in as our base. 
and then we're gonna rename this face and click apply. And in our 2D view, you'll see we have a grayscale gold representation of our actual 3D component. And in our 3D view, we have the component created. And there we have it. And let's look back straight down on that again. And let's close this down. So over here in our component tree, we have our level that we've renamed base. And on that level, we have a component named face. Now for our next step, we're going to create the details that will lay on top of our face. And to keep that organized, we should probably create a new level for that. So let's right click on base and say insert a new level. And then we can select that level, right click on that and go down to rename level. And we're going to call that details. Press enter. And this is going to be an add level. So the result of all the components on this level will be added to the result of all the components on our base level. So let's start off by creating our snout. We'll select our snout vector. We'll bring up our shape creation tool. We're going to make sure this is a curve profile again. We're going to change the snout to be 35 degrees, no base height no limit, no tilt. We're going to add this component in and we're going to call this snout and click apply. And you'll see that in our 3D view, we have a nice looking snout. Now, if we're not happy with that, we can go ahead and go back and change our shape profile or any of these settings if we'd like to. So we can change our shape profile, our angle dynamically. And you can see in the 3D view that's changing. We can go back and change that to 35 if we'd like. Press the space bar for that to be accepted. And there we have it. And let's look straight back down on that again. So to reiterate, now that we have our face and our snout visible in our 3D view, this is our composite model. Now, seeing as we have this form already open, and we just want to move on to create more shapes, we can just click Start a New Component. In this case, let's choose our Nose Vector. We're going to change our angle to be 60 degrees. We're going to leave our profile shape to be the curved profile again. No base height, no limit, no tilt. And we're going to add this to our components that are already there. Let's rename this Nose and click apply. And again, in our 3D view, you'll see our nose is now there, been added to our snout, which looks great. Next, let's move on to our eyes. Now we can create a component from two different closed vectors if we'd like at the same time. So if we start a new component and we hold down our shift key and select both eyes, we can leave our shape profile to be a curve profile. We can change our angle to be 40, no base height, no limit, no tilt. We'll make it add again. We want to rename this to eyes. We'll click apply. And you'll see that now we have two eyes as one component. The next thing we're going to do is create our mouth. So let's start a new component, select our mouth. We're going to use the curve profile again. We're going to go ahead and change our angle to be 50. No base height, no limit, no tilt. We're going to add that. We're going to call this mouth. We're going to apply that. And you'll see that our mouth has been added to our snout, which looks OK. But I think it'd be better if maybe we changed our combined mode to be subtract. Let's try that. So we'll click the subtract and automatically it will be updated in our 3D view. And I think that that's more what we were looking for. And that looks pretty nice. So let's look back straight down on that again. And let's close that seeing as we've completed all of our details that we want added to our face. Now let's take a look at our component tree again. So we have two levels. We have the details level and the base level. On the base level, we have just the face component. And on the details level, we have the mouth the eyes, the nose, and the snout. And that looks perfect. 
Now for our, our last level, we're going to need a place to put our ears. So let's right click on top of the details. Let's go down and click insert new level. Right click and we're going to rename that level to be ears. Press enter to accept that. In this case, we're going to make this a merge level because we want our ears to merge into our face. We don't want them to be added on top of our face. So let's right click on that, go over to combine, and we'll go to merge. Let's select our two outer ears, go back into our shape creation. We're going to use our curve profile again. We're going to change this to our angle to be 40 degrees. No base height, no limit, no tilt. We're going to add that and we're going to call this outer ears. We'll apply that. And you'll see that in our 3D view, the shapes that we created are merging into our bare head. So let's start a new component. Let's now choose our inner ears. We'll hold down our shift key and select both of those vectors. We're going to use the same profile. We're going to make this 35. We're going to have no base height, no final height. There's just going to be no limit at all, no tilt. But in this case, we're going to use subtract. We're going to call this inner ear. And we're going to hit apply. And then we're going to close that down. And we'll have a look at our composite model. And that looks really great. Let's look back down on that. Now let's take a moment and review our component tree. Let's turn off all of our components and all of our levels. And we'll go through these one at a time so that we can be sure that we understand what's going on. So to start out with, we were given a level called level one, and we renamed that to base. And on that, we built our face component. And then we created a second level, and this level is called details. And the result of the components on this level will be added to the result of the components on the base level. And we started off and we created our snout, our nose, our ears, and then we subtracted our mouth from that. And then we created our ears level, which we made a merge level so that our ears would merge into the resulting levels. And we created our outer ears and then our inner ears. Now, if we wanted to, we could change our combine modes on our levels. If we right click on our ears level and we change our combine mode to be add, we'll see that in our 3D view, our composite model has changed and the ears are being added on to the result of the other two levels that we have. And that doesn't look quite right. It looked much better when they were merged in. So let's just go ahead and right click on ears change the combine mode back to merge and we can see that now the ears are merging in and it looks like we expect so let's look back straight down onto our model again now also we can move around we can transform our components if we would like so for example if we wanted to give a bit of an expression to our bear we could select the mouth click it again and we could rotate it using some of our rotation handles to give them a bit of a different look. We can also select multiple components. So if we wanted to go ahead and hold down our shift key, we could select our mouth, our snout, and our nose, and then we can go ahead and move those if we would like to off to the side a bit and even give them a little bit more expression. In this case, we're gonna go edit and we're gonna undo all those moves until we're back to where we started from. Now it's time to start thinking about how we're going to create tool paths to cut this on our CNC machine. What we are going to need is a vector boundary that goes around the outside of our teddy bear head so that we can use that to develop our tooling from. There are a couple of different ways of doing this. One way is to select all of the components that are here and create a vector outline from that. And to do that, we can simply select the inner ears and holding down our shift key select face at the bottom 
and the software will select all the components within those two components. So you'll see that all of our components are selected. And in our modeling tab, we can use create vector boundary around selected components. So if we click that, the software will develop a brand new vector outline around all of these. But as we've created this teddy bear head using perfect vectors, we may as well go ahead and use those vectors to create our outline. So let's just off click in the white space. And if we hold down our shift key, we can choose these three vectors, the two ear outer vectors, and then our face vector. And if we weld those together, we'd have a perfect vector outline to use. Now the best way to do that is to use vector layers to keep everything organized. So if we hover over one of these vectors and right click on it, we can say copy to a layer. And in this case, we only have one layer. That's the active layer that we're using right now. But we can go ahead and create a brand new layer. So let's do that. And we can give it a new name if we'd like, but we'll leave it the way it is. We can give it a color if we would like, but we'll leave it as black. That's fine. We're going to make the new layer visible. And we're going to make sure that new layer is active. And we can click that and then click OK. Now right now, not much has changed, but if we go down and take a look at our Layers tab, down on the bottom left-hand side, you'll see that we have two layers now in our Layers list. We have Layer 1, which is the one that we originally had, and then we have Layer 2, which is the new one that we just created. If we click on the light bulb on Layer 1, that will sh switch off all of the vectors or the visibility of all the vectors on layer one. And we're left with just the three vectors that we have selected. Now, if we click over to our drawing tab, we can use one of our edit objects options called weld. And if we click that, the software will weld those three vectors together and just give us the outline boundary of those. And that's a perfect outline of our bear's head to use to help us to define our tooling. Now it's also important to note that in our 2D view, we don't have our bitmap representation showing up anymore of our composite model. If we go ahead and take a look at our modeling tab, all of these components and levels have been turned on. And so that's okay. In this particular case, it doesn't matter that we can't see our bitmap representations in our 2D view because our tooling will be created based on what we can see in our 3D composite model, which is our bare head, as you see here. Now to start creating our tooling, we're going to have to get access to our tool paths options. So to do that, we can just go over here to our the top of our design tools and you'll see this little icon here. If we click that, that will pop up our tool paths tab, pin it in place, and then tuck away temporarily all of our drawing and our modeling tools along with our levels and our clip art. Now if we want to get access to those again in a more permanent way, we can just click this button over here over on our tool paths tab and it will pop up our modeling tabs again and drawing tabs and we can go back and forth between the two if we would like. Now before we start actually developing our tooling we need to actually set up our material and this setup is the actual physical setup that we have happening on our machine and so if we set that we can now have a look at our material setup form. We can take a second and double check the thickness of our material to make sure that it's correct. In this case, it's correct. It's 0.75 of an inch. We can choose where we want our X0, Y0 or our XY datum. Most people will set it on our bottom left, mainly because that allows the machine to reference any points in our job as positive locations. Some people choose to use it in the center, but for this demonstration we're just going to make sure we use the bottom left. We're going to zero off our material surface and then we're going to tell where our composite model needs to lie within our material. 
In this case, you'll see that we have a 3D representation of our block of material. The light brown is our actual composite model, and then the dark brown is leftover material. So we can use our slider bar to position that in there, wherever we'd like it to be. But before we decide on that, we're going to make one change. We're going to take a look at these options right here, which is our model thickness. At this point, we can go ahead and set it to an exact thickness if we would like. In this case, I'd like to set that to be 0.6 of an inch, exactly, and then click Apply. Close that down, and you'll see that this number has been updated. And now I can go ahead and leave a slight gap above my component, and you'll see that the 3D preview of that has changed. And what that allows is to take into account any variations in my material thickness at the very top. And that way I won't, when I cut my composite model, I won't have any flat spots showing. I should double check my rapid Z gaps to make sure they're safe and appropriate for my setup. And also I may want to take a look at my start position as well. And in this case, I am going to change it to be 0.5 above my material and then click OK. So now that we have our material all set up, we're going to go ahead and develop three different tool paths to cut out this teddy bear face. We're going to start off with a roughing pass, which is going to use this vector that we created earlier as a way to contain our tooling with inside that vector. And we're going to use a large cutter to hog out or remove the majority of material, leaving behind some material for our finishing bit to go back in and remove so that we can reveal our detail of our composite model. Then we're going to create a finish toolpath, which will use a much smaller cutter to go in and remove that thin skin of material to reveal our details. And then we're going to use this vector again to create a profile cut, which will essentially is a cutout so that we can remove our teddy bear head from our material easily. So the first one we're going to choose is going to be our 3D roughing toolpath. So we'll select that and we'll work our way through this form. The first thing we need to do is to actually select a tool. So we can click the select button and that will bring up our tool database. In this case, our tool database has been populated with the default tools that came with my software. But you can see we have imperial tools, we have metric tools, and each one of those we have N mills, ball nose, N mills, V bits, and specialty tools that we may have defined for special projects. In this case, we are going to use this quarter inch end mill, and the diameter is 0.25 of an inch. And you can take a look through our settings, and all of these look safe and appropriate for my particular project and machine, so we're going to select that. Now, if I temporarily wanted to edit any of that tool data, I can go ahead and use the edit button and that will bring up any of the options that we can temporarily change that will only be taken into account for this one tool path but everything here looks great so we're going to go ahead and click OK. The next thing we need to do is choose our machining limit boundary. Now we can use our model boundary, our material boundary, a selected vector or selected level. In this case we're going to use our selected vector so we just need to make sure that in our 2D view we have that vector selected and when it is selected you'll see that it is colored purple. We're going to choose a boundary offset and what that will allow our tool to do is instead of just coming up to this vector and stopping it'll actually go slightly beyond that so we can roll over the edge of our composite model to get the edge details that we see here. And typically we would use half of our cutter diameter, which is our radius, plus our machining allowance. But in this case, I'm just going to use 0.13, and that should be fine. Our machining allowance is the thin layer of material we're going to leave behind so that we can go back in with our finishing toolpath and remove that and 0.03 is fine and also this will leave some material behind in case your large bit chips away anything it will give you a bit of a buffer so you won't chip the material that you need for your finish. We can choose our roughing strategy, Z-level roughing, 
or a 3D raster. In this case, we're going to use Z-Level. We're going to do a profile pass at last. We're going to go level by level, and we're going to raster along X. We're not going to use any ramp plunge moves, and we're just going to rename this to be 3D roughing dash, and we'll put in the size of our cutter just for good measure, and it's an end mill just so we can keep everything straight, and we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And you'll see that in our 3D view, we are shown our preview of our 3D toolpath, and we can take a look around that and see what it looks like. Now to better visualize what's going to happen, we can just go ahead and click Preview Visible Toolpath, and you'll see that virtually our cutter will move along and remove the material as if it was actually on your machine. This is a very powerful feature. If something doesn't look right at this point, it's very easy to go back and fix it. If you wait until after it's been cut, you may not be able to fix it. So make sure that your 3D preview looks like what you expect it to look like. And if not, you should go in and try and fix it. And this is exactly what I expected to see happen. So I can go ahead now and close that. Our next tool path will be our 3D finishing pass. So we're going to go ahead and click the 3D finishing tool path option. We're going to go in and take a look to make sure we have a proper tool selected. In this case, it's a 1 8 inch ball nose, which is exactly what I wanted to have. So we're going to go ahead with that. If I wanted to, I could temporarily, again, edit any of the settings, but all of these look safe and appropriate for my setup. I'll just click OK. Now again, we'll have to go through and choose our machining limit. We're going to use our selected vector again. We're going to go out that what I think is a safe boundary offset of the same diameter as my tool, which is an eighth of an inch. We can use either an offset strategy or a raster strategy. In this case, I, an offset may not work as well as I'd like working from the inside out, but I believe a raster will give me a much better finish. I can choose the angle that I'd like it to raster at. We'll set that to zero. That way it'll go back and forth along my x-axis. And we can go ahead and give that a new name, 3D Finish. And we'll put in 0.125 ball nose in the mill. And we'll calculate that. It takes a little bit longer to calculate because it's a much smaller cutter. And you can see that in our 3D preview that it's a much denser toolpath than we had before. Again, we can preview that visible toolpath. And we'll need to be sure that the result is exactly what we're hoping to see. And in this case, it was. I think I'm getting great detail for the cutters that I've chosen. So I don't need to go and change that. And everything looks really nice. Now, the last tool path we're going to do is going to be that profile cut. Where we're actually going to go ahead and cut our part out of our material. And to do that, we're going to choose our profile tool path. Now, this is our 2D profile tool path. We start off by defining our, defining our cutting depths. We're going to start at zero, and we're going to, go, going to go down our full depth of our material, which is 0.75 of an inch. We're going to use the end mill that we used before, but it's going to take five passes to do that. I'm going to go ahead and edit my tool to reduce the number of passes. And you'll see now that my pass depth is set to 0.15. I'm pretty confident that with my setup, I can make that a quarter inch. And so as soon as I click OK, you'll see that my pass steps are updated to three. I think that's probably going to be much better, much more efficient. I can choose how I'd like it to machine based on the vectors that I have. So I can go outside the vector, inside the vector, or on the vector. In this case, I want to go outside this profile vector. I can choose the direction. I can add an allowance, but I'm not going to do that. I can add a separate last pass, but I don't need, don't need to do that. But I will add in some tabs because I'm not fortunate enough to have a vacuum hold down on my CNC. So I'm going to click that. And I can go ahead and check to make sure that the length and the thickness of my tabs is appropriate. In this case, I'm going to make my length 0.5 and the thickness 0.1. And then we can edit our tabs. And in our toolpath tabs form, I can go ahead and choose a consistent number of tabs that I would like. So we may as well go ahead and add in three. 
and click in the Add Tabs. Now in the 2D view, you can see where the, the software has placed these tabs. So they're indicated by these little yellow squares with a T in it. I can go ahead and hold down my left mouse button on top of those and drag those around and place them where I'd like them to be. I can single click on them to delete them. I can single click to add in a new one. So that way I can go ahead and place these where I think they need to be to hold my part in place. I think that looks pretty good. We can go ahead now and close that down. I'm not going to mess with any of these settings here. But if you are interested in that, I'll add a link to the profile toolpath guide just below. And we're going to go ahead and name this profile. So we'll call it profile 0.25. And it's an end mill again. And then we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And in our 3D preview, you're going to see our tool lines are here. There's the three levels and then our three passes, and then also you can see our tab is indicated there. So if we zoom out a little bit, I can go ahead and preview that visible tool path, and you'll see that we have the tabs left behind that we need. Let's just go ahead and maximize our 3D view. And again, this is the time to take a look at your preview and make sure it is what you expect to see when you remove it off of your machine. If it's not, this is the perfect time to go back and adjust your tooling so that what you see in your 3D preview is accurate to what you like to see on your machine when all your tool paths are finished cutting. Now, if we're all happy with that, we can click close and we can proceed to save off our tool paths. So let's click to save tool paths. In this case, we're going to unclick output all tool paths as one file. You'll need to choose your post processor. This is what will take our toolpaths that you saw being simulated in our software and modify it to work with your CNC machine. And you can go ahead and choose your CNC machine out of this list or your controller software. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and down to our G code in inches. We can select the toolpath that we'd like to save off, and you'll see that name is reflected here. And then you can click save and save it off somewhere is appropriate for you to be able to find that and you can do that for each of your tool paths as you go along once you're finished with that it's always a good idea to save off your file and i'll save this one off in my tutorial folder we're going to call this teddy bear vector drawing getting started and then click save so now that we've saved off our file, that completes this tutorial.